In this video, we're going to look at an example problem where we use what we learned in the previous video to interpret a wave function. So let's look at the problem that, we, that we're given here. So it says the wave function of an electron in the lowest energy state of a hydrogen atom is proportional to e to the negative r over a naught, with a naught being a constant and r the distance from the nucleus. Calculate the relative probabilities of finding the electron inside a region of volume dV equals 1.0 picometers cubed, which is small even on the scale of an atom, looked at at the nucleus and be at a distance a naught from the nucleus. So what is this asking us to do? So I've drawn out a little sketch to kind of help visualize what this question is asking us. So it's basically saying, all right, we've got this hydrogen nucleus. And our job is to figure out what's the relative probability of an electron being located at the actual nucleus itself versus some distance a naught from the nucleus, right? So, um, so in order to do this, what we're going to do is, you know, we're not going to use any calculus at this point. I just really want you to focus on the, um, the qualitative meaning of this and kind of leave the calculus on the cutting room floor for now. If we want to really figure out probabilities, we'll have to use calculus. We'll have to integrate over regions of space. But for now, let's just use relative probabilities and figure out uh, what's the relative probability of an electron being located at the nucleus in hydrogen and versus some distance further away from it. Okay, so it's telling us that this lowest energy state is proportional to this function, right? So that's mean, that means that our wave function is going to be proportional to this function. So basically, this is telling us that psi, which is going to be a function of r, is going to be proportional to e to the negative r over a naught. Now, much later in the course, you'll figure out that this is the wave function for a 1s electron in hydrogen, right? The lowest energy orbital, right? The 1s orbital for hydrogen. So this function is proportional to, the wave function is proportional to this function. So what we're going to do is calculate a probability just using this uh, function, right? Just squaring this function and multiplying it by the volume element, right? So that volume element, dV, is equal to 1.0 picometers cubed. So you can think about that in the, in the context of this box as, you know, each of these sides being one picometer, right? Each of these sides are going to be one picometer. And so that volume is going to be one picometer cubed as well, right? So what we want to do is square the wave function. So let's actually just square the wave function before we plug anything in, right? So we know that the probability is going to be proportional to the square of the wave function, right? This is from the Born interpretation, right? The Born interpretation says that the probability is going to be uh, equal to the square of the wave function times that change in volume, right? So, um, so if we uh, actually plug in our wave function that we've been given, right? That's going to be e to the negative r over a naught times e to uh, the negative r over a naught right? DV. Since this isn't a complex number, we don't have to take the modulus or anything. We just square this function. And so we finally get that the probability is going to be proportional to e to the negative 2r over a naught, right? So, you know, you multiply these uh, functions together, you add up their exponents and you get negative uh, e to the negative 2r over a naught times DV. Okay, so now we have a probability uh, distribution. So what we want to do is plug in um, for uh, considering the, the cases of the electron being at the nucleus and some distance a naught from the nucleus. So for part A, let me use a different color for the solution here. So part A, right, if the electron is located at the nucleus, then that means that R is going to be equal to zero. Right, because R in this case, right, is the distance from the nucleus. If it's located at the nucleus, then there is no distance from the nucleus. So R is going to be zero. So if we plug that into our function here, right, we know that the probability of A, I'll put a uh, P sub A for our probability for the box A, is going to be equal to E to the negative two times zero over A naught. 
And obviously, since that zero is there, this is just going to be e to the zero. So the prob relative probability for a is just going to be 1.0. Okay, so now let's do uh, the probability for b, right? Some distance a naught. So that means in this case, r is going to be equal to a naught, right? And if we look at the probability for b, right? That's going to be e to the negative 2 times a naught over a naught. Obviously, we get cancellation here, right? A naught is going to cancel with a naught. So those guys cancel out. So you're really just left with e to the negative 2, which is going to give us 0 0.14. Okay, so now we're looking for the relative probability. So if we uh, take a ratio, that can give us the rel relative probability. So we wanna take a ratio between PA and PB. So if we do PA over PB, that's gonna be one over 0 0.14. And that's going to equal 7.1. Okay, so what is this number actually telling us? Well, this is telling us that the electron is 7.1 times more likely to be located at the nucleus than a distance A naught away from the nucleus, right? So the electron is 7.1 times more likely to be at the nucleus. Right, so you get about a seven times greater likelihood of that electron being located at the nucleus than some distance a naught away from the nucleus. Right, so that's how we can interpret uh, this relative probability for uh, for a and b. Okay, so now what if we were instead of looking at hydrogen, we were looking at helium. Right, let's say we were looking at a helium nuclei. So let's actually change our um, Let's change our, our figure here, right? Let's say we're looking at helium now, right? So if we wanted to do this for helium, helium's going to have a different function. Keep in mind, every system is going to have a different wave function. For helium, its wave function for its lowest energy state is gonna be proportional to e to the negative 2r over a naught. Right, so that's going to be the function for helium, our wave function for helium. Let's go through the same exercise and see what we get. We'll do the same thing. Calculate the relative probability at the nucleus and some distance a naught away from the nucleus, right? So we know that the square of this wave function, right, if we square this wave function, then that's gonna now give us e to the negative 4r over a naught. Right, because you're going to multiply e to the negative two r, e to the negative times e to the negative two r. That gives you e to the negative four r over a naught. So going through the same exercise, right? So if we go through this the same exercise for part a, we're looking at it at the nucleus where r is equal to zero. So again, that would give us, you know, e to the negative four times zero over a naught. So again, we get zero here. So we end up with uh, 1.0. And then for part B, right, at some distance A naught away from the nucleus, we get E to the negative four, right? Because you substitute A naught, those A naughts cancel just like they did here, and we get E to the negative four. So that's gonna give us a probability of 0 0.0183. So now again, taking the ratio, Right, so if we take that ratio of PA over PB, that's going to give us uh, one over 0 0.0183. So that gives us a 54.64 uh, times greater likelihood of finding the electron at the nucleus versus some distance A naught away from the nucleus, right? So if we compare these two numbers, let's compare these two numbers, right? The electron is far more likely to be found at a nucleus 
than it in, in helium than it is in hydrogen. So does this fit with our um, our uh, chemical intuition? It should, right? Because for in the case of helium, right, you have another proton, right? So that means that that electron is going to have a greater attraction to the nucleus in the case of helium than it will in the case of hydrogen. Even though in both cases, the electron is far more likely to be found in the nucleus than it is um, it, it, yeah, in helium than in, um, in hydrogen, right? So in this case, we have a, a result from quantum mechanics that gels well with our chemical intuition. It gels well with our understanding of chemistry, right? Um, in the case of helium, this electron is going to be more likely to be found at a nuclei because it has a larger electrostatic attraction to the nucleus because of the added protons, right? So this is how you can interpret a wave function and get qualitative information about the location of particles from that wave function.